Hey folks, David from Default Sound here, and I thought I'd do a little screen capture of my first impressions on Main Stage 3.3. I downloaded the update a couple days ago, but I actually haven't had a chance to do anything within the new update yet, so I thought I'd just kind of record as I open up a concert for the first time and kind of poke around. And I'll talk about some of the new features as well. Uh, so I'm just letting my concert load here. Uh, obviously Main Stage 3.3 comes with a new flat interface. The same as Logic 10.3. Looks much more uh, Ableton-y. Alright, here we've got Sunday Keys open. I'm just going to grab this here. Alright, so this is it now. Uh, this is 3.3. Like I said, I downloaded it a couple days ago when the update came out, but I haven't really done any uh, poking around. Um, so obviously you've got the new flat uh, design to channel strip sections to basically everything uh, other than the layout stuff um, has this new flat aesthetic. I've noticed that even some of the stuff in layout seems to have been flattened a little bit as well, or at least made uh, sharper. Some would say harsher, but uh, I kind of dig the look. I think it's uh, it looks nice and clean. Um, okay, so you know uh, some of the new features I've read about. You can change the color of a set folder now, which is neat if you really want to get deep in edit stuff. Um, you can edit uh, the toolbar now. So just control click and customize toolbar and. You can drag stuff wherever you want it to go, and which is pretty cool. Being able to put things wherever you want, kind of neat. Uh, you've got a spacer. Nothing really new. Uh, it's just kind of giving you a little more control. And then you've got these toggle options to turn stuff on and off. And they've got this original version that you can just drag on. I guess you can show text as well if that helps you to remember what stuff does, which is kind of nice. Um, I've heard that the CPU monitor in main stage is actually uh, pretty different compared to uh, the 3.2 CPU monitor. There's no detail specifically from uh, Apple on what is different, but what seems to be kind of the, the forming consensus is that the CPU monitor seems to be looking at the sum of your uh, all CPU usage instead of uh, how it used to just give you a display of a single cores usage. So if you had a quad core, this percentage here or this here would show you the percentage of one of those cores that you were using, which was you know generally indicative of your overall consumption, but it wasn't as accurate as the actual CPU monitor within uh, Apple system preferences. So now it seems like this CPU monitor is actually showing you the sum of your cores uh, and a percentage of usage based on all of that. And I think that includes virtual cores as well. So that's probably an improvement. Uh, you might uh, need to kind of get a new gauge for what this meter actually represents to you now, whereas you might have been able to float at 40% before and be fine. Uh, that was a single core, and so now you might have to get a new uh, gauge on what CPU percentage is usable for you and what is not. Um, I heard that there were a lot of tweaks to layout mode. It was just super glitchy, and they seem to have corrected most of those issues, which is encouraging. Um, let's see, what else is new? Uh, there's one new plugin which is a loudness meter. And that's under, let's see, where is it? Specialized? No. Let me see if I can find it here. I don't remember where it is. Um, let me think. Metering. There we go. Sorry. Loudness meter. Uh, this gives you an indication of the loudness over time, measured in LUFs. Uh, a little bit different. Uh, then <clears throat> your uh, your only option used to be uh, this level meter, 
which uh, was just more of a of an in the moment indicator of that. So uh, that's new. And uh, you can use these toggle inspector buttons to shut stuff off, bring it on if you want to perform in edit mode, then turning off the inspector gives you access to a larger display. You can still tweak channel strips and access your patch list. So that's pretty handy. Uh, you can do the same thing here. You, you can't turn off the patch list as far as I can tell. Uh, but by that point, you may as well just use perform mode. Uh, one of the things I am super excited about is the new functions for MIDI effects. And I'm going to do a separate video on this. Uh, it used to be that you could use a MIDI modifier and you could attach it. You could assign an input event to a different MIDI CC as the output. So I use this all the time. I'd map my mod wheel to volume. And then I'd be able to bring the patch or the channel strip volume in with my mod wheel. Super handy. But that's about all you could do. Now you can go here and hit learn plugin parameter. And then you can open a plugin on that channel strip. And then just click one, uh, a parameter. And now as you uh, that input event comes in, it'll tweak, uh, it'll uh, reassign that to control that plugin parameter. So that's really cool. I've heard it works with third party plugins as well. Uh, so all the MIDI effects that can be, uh, that reassign MIDI uh, can be mapped to that. So that's true of the modulator as well. So you can map this LFO to literally any plugin parameter on that channel strip. That's the only limit is that it has to be on the channel strip uh, that the MIDI modifier or modulator is on. But you can put an envelope on reverb. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do another video on this one because this is what I am most excited about. Uh, I haven't dug too deeply into all of these yet, uh, but I will do that a little bit at a time. Uh, and as I discover more features, I will do more content about them. Um, the last thing I want to say is that um, Apple claims to have greatly improved the performance of the Alchemy plugin. And from what I've heard from friends online so far, that is actually uh, pretty true. Uh, I've heard from my friend Jason Schofer, shout out to you, um, that he's experienced actually usable CPU response. Uh, it used to be that Alchemy was just a, such a CPU hog that I really didn't trust it for live use. And uh, they claim to have evened out the spikes uh, now, as I say that, I see it spiked to 100 when I first opened, but now it's settling back down to 8%. Uh, so, you know, the plugin's going to be open already. Uh, so I've, I've heard uh, a few people still voice a little concern about CPU usage on some of the uh, sounds in here as you get into more complex ARPs and stuff. This is a, the most powerful plugin that Mainstage comes with, so I'm not expecting it to run at, at 2%, but... Uh, if it proves true that they've saw, uh, eliminated a lot of the issues with random spikes and with uh, patch change spikes, uh, first note spikes, or uh, also ran into a lot of issues with polyphony, you'd play more than four or five notes at a time and you'd see big jumps. If those issues have been resolved, then this is a game changer for me as a sound designer because Alchemy offers so many routing uh, and matrix options that ES2, uh, RetroSynth, EXS24 just don't have. This is uh, much closer in depth to like Omnisphere or something like that. Uh, so if this is usable now in main stage, uh, I'm really excited to dig into it. Uh, I've just never felt like it was worth the time before because of how unreliable it was. So I'm really looking forward to testing out to see if uh, the rumors are true and that we can actually use Alchemy for live performance now. That would be really exciting because even the presets in Alchemy are much more suited for uh, worship music and, and a lot of the sounds that we're using today than any of the other instruments in main stage. Uh, so that's it. Other than that, there's a ton of bug fixes and stuff that I haven't touched on, uh, but you can go check out uh, the release notes. I'll have a link to those in the video description. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to do a full video that talks just about the new MIDI effects functions and how, and I'll list some ideas on how you can start to use those. Um, oh, and one other thing, you can also sidechain any instrument now. 
uh, via, uh, let's see. I'm going to open up something I'm more familiar with. I'm going to open up ES2. You can now sidechain uh, instruments via another instrument, which is really cool. I didn't used to be able to do that, but you could select any instrument for input and then sidechain to that, which would allow you to get some really cool new effects. Uh, they've also added uh, true panning. So uh, it used to be when you panned an instrument, uh, you would just hear less of whichever side you were panning away from. Uh, which isn't really true panning, it's just uh, acting like you have uh, two mono uh, signals and you're just making them louder or quieter. Uh, now as you pan it actually moves the center of your signal, uh, so when you have stereo effects it actually shifts the center over the direction that you pan, uh, which is, is, gives you uh, the potential to have wider stereo image and a, a more true response from your stereo effects. So. I'm um, pretty interested to see how that works. It's, it's really probably more useful for recording folks, but um, for those of you who run stereo live rigs, uh, this will actually give you some better response as well. Okay, I'm going to cut this video before it gets too long, uh, but if you liked it, I hope that you will like and comment and share. Uh, I'd love to hear your favorite new feature from 3.3, and if you have had any issues so far, please share those in the comments so that we can all be aware as we get ready for our next live performances. Lastly, stay tuned for that full video on MIDI modifier and modulator effects in 3.3. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.